Hey guys, Chris here from Lifeline EMS Training. I wanted to go over some of the new features in the Life Pack 35 that we think are going to help change the game to the profession. And we'll correlate them to the Life Pack 15. So we'll kind of show you the what's new in the 35 and how it used to work or how it works in the 15. Our opinions in this video are of Lifeline EMS Training only and are not of striker and any other entity. So here you see the screen, the Life Pack 35. One of the things right off the bat that's awesome about it is all of this area here in the center, the so essentially anything that's screen is touch screen. So it's durable touch screen. It works very well with your gloves on. To the right, you see a lot of the traditional kind of buttons, the power, charge, shock, analyze. Still has the dial. So you can still cycle through with the dial, uh, just like you would with the 15. Um, there were the 12 in the past. But you can go through, and now you can see me here tap on the screen. So it's touchscreen, which is really nice because it's a large landscape. So in the heat of the moment, when you're trying to reach across and do something, you're not trying to target a small area or have to go through a couple steps to get to it. It actually opens up dashboards for you. So you can just cycle through and start to get uh, what you need based on the tactility of the screen. It has the ability to easily enter patient data. So you can just come over here and tap patient data and you start typing it on. So you can put age, sex, weight, all that stuff. If and, and if you want, in terms of Life Pack 15, cycle through and then go over into and then target it with the dial. So other cool things on here, you got the events tab. You can go here and quickly tap through what you want and they can actually customize this. So you can swipe up and swipe down, just like you would do on like your iPhone, Android, iPad. Um, so you got the event tab, which is very easy. You got flag, you can come over here. You can turn on your brightness so you're outside working in a rest or a patient on a soccer field in the middle of the day. You can have adaptive brightness on. You can change the brightness level here. So it's very much uh, functions like a tablet device. So what a lot of uh, end users have become more accustomed to. So in this instance, what we see here is we see the ability to just kind of cycle through like you would do on a normal device, like your iPhone, your iPad, et cetera. We'll go down here and cycle through, hit the 12 lead button, which opens up. First thing you see here, which is the dynamic 12 lead feature. So now you can A, see all the leads and B, know that you have quality um, electrode uptake when you acquire your 12 leads, you don't have to recycle that 12 lead because, you know, V6 fell off or you got a lot of motion artifact in one of them that's, you know, three quarters stuck on the patient. And then you've probably seen already that the LifePak 35 has 15 lead capabilities. So it has an extra bundle you can click on to the therapy cable. And now you can actually put the remainder of the 15 leads on so you can get a good circumferential EKG and it doesn't require you moving them. And you just could go over here and relabel them. And so if you look, when you tap this on, when you're acquiring that EKG, you can actually change the labeling of that when you're doing it. So if you're doing right-sided EKGs or you're doing posterior EKGs, you can go in and label those out there. So you go in, you hit acquire, and it still uses the Glasgow. So it requires the age, sex, Uh, you'll see ethnicity in, added in there. It's the newest version of Glasgow that's built into the system. Acquire EKG. And it analyzes, it brings it up into this really awesome dashboard here. So you can actually go through and cycle through the individual leads. And then an even cooler feature is you have the calipers built in. So you tap on the calipers and you can go say, hey, okay, that looks like a P wave. I'm gonna have this one march out here. And then you can either manually do it or you can say march on. 
And depending on however you big or small you build your calipers, it will actually march out multiple sets of those calipers for you. So you see here's one second, two second, three second intervals there. And as you change, the march feature also changes, which is a really sweet rhythmicity measurement or assessment feature that's built into the system. So we have the dynamic ECG. We have the 15 lead with an extra add-on three lead bundle. You have labeling of the leads. We have calipers. And now let's go to the analysis. This is awesome. So in the past, you know, we've spent a lot of energy trying to get people used to or remembering which lead is what artery and who is contiguous and, you know, who's friends with each other, next door neighbors, if they're a townhouse community, if you will. And a lot of times people forget that or they forget, okay, well, if V2, V3, V4 is depressed, who would be the reciprocal elevation that I need to rule out? Well, STJ Insight does that for you. So what you see here is you see STJ Insight that has now mapped out. It's almost like a heat map. And it says, hey, in the gray is the normal variation you can have, you know, based on the uh, ILCOR guidelines. But if you notice here, you have your elevations in red, as well as your depressions in red. And you have, again, the same interpretive statement that comes down. In this instance, it meets ST, uh, meets elevation MI criteria. So STEMI patient, right? But the other thing that's nice here is it actually takes you on opposite sides of the fence when it comes to the elevation and the depression. So if you notice here, we have elevation in 2, 3, AVF, and we have depression in V3, V4, V5, V6, which at the very bottom here, we did not do a 15 lead in this instance. We did a traditional 12 lead. It tells you which ones would be posterior. So it says, okay, well, so we have those reciprocal depressions, plus we have the interpretive statement, and then also, hey, a, does our patient look like a STEMI? Yes, no, right? That's what the provider is doing with their assessment. So one of the cool things about this is it's not just a blanket statement that comes printed out on the top. It actually gives you mapping of where those changes are occurring and what is above or below. So what is elevation? What is depression? In terms of two o'clock in the morning, how this is going to help the provider, this is the thing that's going to pop back up and go, uh, I need to check that one more time. Or you have a BLS crew working with really long transport times. And they get this statement and they call in a STEMI alert. They can actually give the mapping of what's changing on the monitor. To include, you now have a much more specific way of measuring those changes as you're trending your patient from time of first contact and 12 lead or 15 lead to transfer of care. So you can see if the disease process is progressing, stalled, or improving. So the STJ Insight is pretty awesome in that it gives you that mapping, but it also gives you the traditional Glasgow statement as well. So what would that look like on the LifePak 15? Well, you'd come down here, hit the 12 lead button, it would ask you age, click the dial in sex, and it would give you that printout. So pretty big difference. Now, both of them, if the ST segment elevation starts to elevate during transport, we'll start to print out another EKG because you have an ST change that has occurred uh, while the patient is connected. That's why it's important to leave the patient connected to the monitor. Let's talk cardiac arrest. So start our CPR and we have our therapy dashboard. So we'll do some synchronized cardioversion and pacing here in a little bit, but in terms of the DFib dashboard that pops up, so you see the CPR artifact happening up there. Well, when you hit your initial charge, it charges you up to 200 joules. You're clear on clear, we're all clear, shocking, delivered. Now you see the CPR insight button. When I hit CPR insight, now what CPR insight is doing is it's doing a back-end analysis of the underlying rhythm, and it's trying to discern shockability. And if it finds that rhythm to be shockable, it will actually pre-charge, 
prior to the end of that two minute cycle, which is an awesome feature. You have the two minute timer, you have the metronome, all that lives right here on the dashboard, much more cleaner interface, everything in terms of the management of the electrical therapy within that two minute cycle lives right here. You still have the ability to toggle here or change the dial as well. So you get both actions, you get the arrow or the dial. I find it a lot easier to live off of the arrows as opposed to the dial, but that's just my personal preference. You have the ability to go in the compression to ventilation ratio, and you can change that. Just like you could on the LifePak 15. The biggest difference here is everything is nice and clean right next to each other. You have a big two minute timer that's clicking off down there on the bottom with the progress bar. And you also have the energy sitting right next to it. So what does that look like on the LifePak 15? Well, LifePak 15, your energy is up here. Energy select, charge, shock, CPR button over here for the changing the compression to ventilation ratio. Let's see what it analyze. It asks you, are you adult or pediatric? You can touch it or you can hit the dial. So we're in adult AED mode. No shock advanced. Start CPR. So no shock advised, start CPR. Goes right into it. Now this has also CPR insight occurring underneath. And if it detects that rhythm to be shockable, it will do the same thing pre-charge prior to the event. If you need to kick out of it, you just hit manual mode and it kicks right out. What does that look like in Life Pack 15? Life pack 15, you would hit analyze. And it gives you the same prompts in a very similar fashion. Caveat being there's no CPR inside occurring on here. And on the new life pack 35, everything lives in that uh, therapy dashboard there at the bottom. So we'll go out of cardiac arrest here. And we'll go into talk about cardio version. So we hit our therapy button, sync. Nice thing here is once you hit sync, it keeps you all in a nice linear path. So in terms of human factors and problems that can occur under stress, right now we have sync. We go right down to our energy. So our decision path is rhythm, sync, energy. So we're in a nice line and nice easy path for our brain to flow versus before what would a lot of people forget to do? They forget to hit sync. And I'm going to show you a cool feature here in a second that happens. So we've got our sync. We're going to go down to hundred so we can hit the arrows or we can hit the dial. We're going to hit charge. Shows the progress of the charge up. Clear on clear, we're all clear, shock. This is awesome right here. This is a cognitive offload human factor safety masterpiece just the other day worked a call where a provider got so nervous on a vtac patient that they double tapped the sync button because they were jittery here we synchronize cardio over at the person we delivered the energy and it gives you essentially did they die are they in the same rhythm or did we fix them? Can we go back home and monitor them, do an EKG, get a blood pressure, all the other vital signs? This will help you at two in the morning or two in the afternoon, not fail. So we see this patient still in VTAC. We see their pulse ox pleth matches or QRS. So we know they have a pulse. So we're going to hit sync. We're going to go up in energy. Your clam clear, raw clear, shocking, delivered. Now I see a rhythm change, P wave with every QRS, some sinus tachycardia, pulse ox pleth matches. Now I want to go home because I want to get their vital signs. I'm going to start to acquire a 12 lead. I see my end titles trending up. That is an awesome feature for high stress situations. So what would that have looked like on the life pack 15? So we got a life pack 15 here. We need to hit our sync button. So we got sync here. 
The reason I like what the 35 has over this is sync is in your face. It's part of the therapy tab. You have to make the decision to hit it. And then it opens up the other opportunities for you. Here, sync is going. We have the little markers at the top, but it's just a green light in a sea of a lot of other things going on. I now pick my energy, charge it up. You're clear, I'm clear, we're all clear. Shock, delivered. Oh, they're still in VTAC with a pulse. I need to charge up. Oh, I gotta hit sync again. If you notice, it's not in your face like on the 35. It's something that can easily be missed in a high stress situation. I wish these patients weren't high stress because we get paid as professionals to show up and own the treatment, but it is a thing that can be easily lost. Not cardioverting on the R wave can be a problem. That's where we can R on T patients. So that's what it would look like on the Life Pack 15. So it's not that nice in your face dashboard that the 35 provides. So let's do pacing. So we have our bradycardic patient and we go to our therapy and we go to our pacing. Preset 60, and you start going up in your energy. Got your markers. Got a QRS after every pacer spike. I have a pulse ox plus that matches my QRS. All right, I've got electromechanical capture. Drop my dashboard, demand pacing on. I can cycle my pressure. See my end title starting to trend up. End title's looking good. Pulse ox plus is looking good. What does that look like on the 15? Well, we come over here, hit our pacer button, our dial in, start going up. Same fashion as until we get capture. Our home button tells us we're in demand at 70. Got captured 130. Pulse ox plus for every QRS. We have electromechanical capture. So those are some of the key features of the 35 that we think are going to change the game, as well as some other ones that correlate to what the current 15 does. So as always, if you have any questions, hit us up at info at lifelineemstraining.com. We hope you have a great day.